Well, how do the chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steve, and today, chums, I want to talk to you about the notion of home. I know it's, it's not gaming or anything like that, but however, it does apply to how I feel about my online presence and where I call home for my creative outlet that is content creation. Now, I like to feel safe no matter where I am. The place I call home is where I feel safe. So in the real world, you know, I feel safe where I am currently in England because my family are based here in England. My blood family, my two brothers, my parents, my mum and my dad, you may have seen them in some of my vlogs. Freaking awesome people. However, my, I've now got an extended family. I've been with Ivy for now about seven to eight years and I've got to know her family quite well. When we was out in the Philippines, I would also say that the Philippines is like a second home to me and I feel safe there. And so I am putting down roots in the Philippines as well as here in England so we can spend our time between the two families and I call both places home. Now online I have been fairly happy and feeling safe and at home on YouTube. However that's slightly started to change in recent months. We've seen some quite alarming things happening on YouTube. I don't know whether you all watch Russell Brand, but the guy's not even been proven guilty. I don't even think he's been arrested. Yet YouTube has demonetized his channel, which I think is... You're gonna sit on either side of the fence here. Rather than keeping my opinions out, well, I might as well keep them in my head on this one. But I think you get the general gist that you, you don't know whether you're safe or not on a platform. YouTube holds all of the reins. They can change the rules on YouTube, and they have multiple times, not just in the Russell Brand case, but in many a situation. You used to be able to say whatever you wanted profanity-wise on this channel. You can't anymore. It's very difficult to play a game like Cyberpunk. Let's keep this on to me for a second. I've been trying to play Cyberpunk and I keep getting limited ad revenue because there is in-game swearing. You know, this is the latest game. Surely advertisers would like to put their adverts on the latest games people are playing. And it's not real life. The swearing isn't aimed at anyone. It's not going to offend anyone. And the only people that are going to be watching it are people that are interested in that game. I honestly don't see why ad revenue would be restricted on video games. I mean, people play GTA. They play all sorts of games that have got violence and swearing in. But it's make believey worldy type stuff. It's a bit weird, to be honest, people. Anyway, I've hit on up YouTube and I've, I've got a little video excerpt of the actual conversation that I've had with a person over on the actual, yeah, on the actual live chat. And you can see I had a little bit of a back and forward to them. And you'll probably get from this that at first it felt like very generic copy and pasted messages from this individual and I didn't seem to be making much headroom. I could tell from the messages that they were actually free typing with you know, poor grammar and stuff, not the actual robotic auto replies, that I was actually interacting with a real human uh, that did actually care about the predicament that I was in, but their hands were tied to what they could do with inside of the support channels that are through Google. And that's also another worry. Should ever anything happen to my channel more serious than just limited ads, it makes you wonder whether there's a chance that it's going to get rectified. And I honestly don't know whether it would. I haven't got much confidence in the actual help assistant that you can use through YouTube. So anyway, long story short, I've found a second home for my content. I've been putting my content over on Rumble. Now, if you haven't come across Rumble before, it's a very unusual social platform. It has got different tabs for gaming, music, or news, or whatever. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of cryptids on there, which I love, and it's got a lot of conspiracy stuff on there as well. And in the conspiracy fields, I like the fun conspiracies, people that can turn into reptilians, or the Hollow Earth, or the Flat Earth, even. But I just like to, you know, listen to it, watch it digest it for fun. I never take conspiracy seriously, especially the super serious ones, which I don't really get involved in. I only like the, the ones linked to myth and mythology. You know, did we live side by side by dinosaurs? Love that sort of stuff because of the carvings at um, Inca Wat. Anyway, I'll go off on a tangent if I'm not careful. Yeah, because I do love that sort of stuff. And I found that, that my content on that sort of stuff over there, my Captain Steve Talks videos, are doing quite well, which is great. So thank you very much, people on Rumble, for hitting those up. Gaming at the moment isn't so big over there. 
there are some big content creators. I've seen Jason plays there. I've seen a couple of people that I know from on YouTube over on Rumble. And I feel that it's, it's serving a need for me. It's given me a secondary backup of my channel. It's like all my vlogs, all my trip to the Philippines. I've put it over there because I want it there and I want it safe. I know somebody, Miyogi1, he's called himself Miyogi1 now because his Miyogi channel got taken down. Didn't even get given like, you know, you've got 10 days to take down all your videos. Um, I, we're going to close your channel. Nothing like that. I mean, they could have said to him, look, for now we've demonetized your, your channel. Nobody can see your videos but you. You've got 10 days to download them all. Something like that. They didn't even give him that. Bang! Channel gone. You can't log in. You can't get your videos. Goodbye memories. Cheery bye. I thought that was a little bit bad. That scared the bejesus out of me. I mean, at the end of the day, all these videos that were uploading are gigabytes. You know, they're quite large. One day, YouTube could turn around and say, right, we're going to have to start charging people hosting fees. Or if you can't pay the hosting fees, then we're just going to have to take your videos down. They can just change the rules whenever they want, basically, is what I'm saying. So I've made a Rumble backup channel just in case anything ever happens with YouTube. YouTube is still my pr primary channel, people. This is where I like to put my stuff. I know there's a lot of people out there that say that Rumble is very right, right wing. So I'm having problems with a lot of my videos getting limited ad revenue. I found a solution for that, people. So if you've tuned in for the solution, what I'm doing, it's not much of a solution to be fair, but because I'm not getting anything from the ad revenue unless it's from somebody with Premiere or Premium Edition of YouTube, and I'm getting very little return on that video, and YouTube is still running adverts on it. Still running adverts, but they're just pocketing all the freaking ad revenue. Um, what I've done is I've set those to a charity. I found a really good charity for children that are in hospital that's going to bring gaming to their hospital bed to help them to the road of recovery. You know, it keeps their minds occupied rather than staring at a ceiling or having to pay to freaking watch TV in a hospital bed. We've all been there as kids. It's freaking horrible. So yeah, well, at least I have. You know, I, was, I lived quite dangerously as a kid. Fell out of a lot of trees. Yeah, probably tell from the uh, face that's suitable for radio. Anyways, people. So yes, I've set them to charity. Because why the fudge not? You know, every cloud needs a silver lining. I'm injecting my own silver cloud into that freaking negative situation, turn it into a positive. So that's what I've been doing anyway, peeps. Anyway, back to Rumble. And Rumble being, you know, kind of a little bit right wingish. And to be honest, you can use the filters. Anyway, I'll chat about that a bit. You know, and some people are even saying Twitter's going very right wing. You know, so it's very difficult. For me, I've always said that I'm center. I'm center and slightly left leaning is where I would have put myself. But, you know, this was before the pandemic that I would have put myself centre and left-leaning. But during lockdown, something strange happened. All my friends that I would also say were centre and left-leaning in real life, some of them, like about 80% of them, went to the extreme left. They moved the freaking goalpost and they left me where I was. My feelings and thoughts haven't changed on everything. You know, I'm still centre, slightly left-leaning. I still feel we need to get away from fossil fuels. You know, I honestly think that we need to do something about energy crises, but I honestly think that we can get there through nuclear fusion and hydrogen power and stuff. I honestly don't really put a lot of... Anyway, we're going off on another side tangent. Yeah, that went all the way to the far left. Left me sort of middle left. and But now, by their, their token of where the middle is, is way past where I lean to. So that puts me in the right, apparently. I'm, I'm, I'm right leaning now. I didn't change my mind on anything but apparently I'm right leaning but luckily a lot of my friends in real life they don't overly take politics too seriously and we still just have a really nice debate about things you know it it might just result in oh pish posh whatever yeah well you believe that I believe this let's just have a pint you know and it, that's about as far as it ever goes to be fair and we're still good friends and I've also got people that have gone the other way gone all the way over to the right far leaning to the right and then you know that they don't believe in anything that the left is saying anymore you know it's it's craziness on both sides of the fence and i still say that i'm somewhere in the middle and uh, yeah uh, anyway people where was i yeah so anyways i've moved some content over to, well i haven't moved it i've duplicated it i've cloned my channel into three sections over on Rumble, a lot of people out there in the view of us said that they would love to see my channel split out, have vlogs separate, gaming separate, and my talks separate, so they're not hit by so many notifications. 
Well, I've done that over on Rumble. I've, I've done that. And then over on YouTube, I've got everything in one freaking place. I'm keeping my channel on YouTube exactly how it is because there is more people that like my channel the way that it is than are suggesting that I split it out. But I just wanted to do it as an experiment. Over on Rumble, because it's a very different platform and it's got different key integers that go there, I don't think gaming has picked up over there worldwide. The app isn't even available worldwide. I can't even install the app here in the UK. I think they've got something against Rumble, to be honest, in the UK. Don't know why. But anyways, I've put it over there. And it seems to be doing okay-ish. You know, I've, I've earned 15 pence. 15 pence in real money. <laughs> but it's good. At least I've got uh, sort of, you know, monetized straight away over there. And we'll see if it goes strength to strength. Which is another thing when it comes to revenue streams. As I mentioned before, I've been hit with limited ad revenue on my channel on YouTube, on various content, but it's not just happening now on Cyberpunk, it's also happening on No Man's Sky. If I use the odd innuendo, or if I'm running with my mates and we, we, we go a little bit more adult, a little bit more blue, those videos get hit with the same sort of restrictions, which is a little bit of a pain in the neck, but I understand why they do it. You know, they've got to please their advertisers. So it, it's that. There is elements of that. I've hit up Ricey. Rice has had the same thing happen to his. Rice is Starship Emporium, another great YouTube content creator for No Man's Sky. He's had the same things happen. I hit up Jason Plays. Asked Jason. Hasn't happened to Jason, but Jason is very good at keeping his content for that younger audience. So, yeah, if you are looking for that sort of stuff, Jason Plays, a freaking awesome No Man's Sky content creator. And he's also reaching out and doing other stuff. Anyway, going off on another freaking tangent now. So, yeah, so, that's all I really wanted to say to you people, is the world at the moment is a very scary place, not just in real life, but online. The things that you can and cannot say on different platforms is getting smaller and smaller and finite and finite, to the point where it stifles gaming is a little bit of a worry. You know, if it's all worldly politics -y stuff, fine, I kind of get that. If it's hurting somebody or infringing on somebody else or if it's offending somebody else fine but video games where it's all make-believe it's a world of fantasy it's escape from reality being hit as if it was real lifey type stuff kind of makes me a little bit nervous about where online platforming is going when it comes to content creation and to be honest youtube holds the biggest market share in that. I mean, Twitch is great if you're doing live, but I've heard Twitch is getting worse than YouTube for this sort of stuff over there, for censorship and stuff. There's Kick, which is pretty cool. However, their main backers kind of feel almost mafia-like, and it's a little bit of a worry over there, so... I honestly don't think there's much of a arrival yet to YouTube. And for now, I'm just using Rumble as sort of like a... Um, a, st a, a a repository, an archive. It's like a secondary archive of my stuff. And I'm hoping that one day something arises. I'm really hoping that Elon Musk manages to get his streaming services up online on Twitter. And rather than having it just for those that have got, you know, the blue ticked accounts, he starts opening it for more people to sort of make it more of a streaming platform to rival that of YouTube. That, that could appeal to me because I really do like Twitter. I like the little mini, you know, synopsis that you can chuck out there willy-nilly. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, we'll see how things go. There's probably people out there that say, no, not Twitter, I hate Twitter. Yeah, there's a lot of people that say that about Rumble as well. This is what I mean. YouTube seems to be the go-to for place for people or the consensus or the, ma the vast majority of people. But I think that vast majority of people are starting to get a little bit uneasy about some of the things that's happening over on YouTube. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know how you feel about all of this. And I I'm just putting my feelers out. I'm trying to work out what's best for me, best for my channel, um, best for my content, best for you guys to get entertained. That's what I'm thinking, people. It's, it's a tricky one. Getting the balance right right now is... I just don't feel safe anywhere online now when it comes to my content and where to house it. It's an odd one. But anyway, that's a quandary. Yeah, anyhow. Yep. I don't know whether this is a video that's worth putting out there. I really don't. Uh, I'm, I'm in two minds right now whether to hit delete on this video or to keep it, people. Uh, all I'm thinking is there's other content creators in the same boat as me right now that might be feeling a bit nervous, that might share these sort of sentiments, but I'm thinking the vast majority of people that come to my channel aren't content creators, obviously. You're viewers, you're watchers. 
how do you feel about all this? You know? More Captain Steve in more places is the way I look at it. But do you look at it differently? Do you think, well, if Captain Steve's going to Rumble and Rumble's a very dodgy site, that's, that's not good. I mean, I'm not going there. It is just an archive. My content is staying put on YouTube. I have faith that YouTube is going to work all this out in the wash. You see, YouTube follows the narrative. Whatever's peddled by the media, whatever's peddled elsewhere and by the powers that be, whether they're shadowy or whatever, we never know, you know, conspiracy circles, but... <laughs> So they follow the narrative, and I have seen the narrative do a little bit of a flip-flop as of late. There's, there's things that you couldn't say before that you can say now that you couldn't say a few months ago. Yeah, I think you all know what I'm on about there. And hopefully we're going to see that reversal happen in other areas as well. Maybe we might start seeing a little bit of a... A more of a free speechy platform appearing here again at some point. I mean, it was that way before Google got too involved. I think it's when they changed their CEO that um, things started to change here massively on YouTube. And you have people now replacing words in news stories. It's funny. If you're a free news channel, like, you know, Tusi on We or something like that, are the media. Tusi on We are the media. The him, you know, you may have seen him. Or John Campbell, who does all the dotry type stuff. Well, there's, there's countless others. You've probably got your favourites, you know, Russell Brand even. But they have to start replacing words in the, what they're saying. You can't say that you've, you know, ended someone's life or whatever. You, you can't say the K word for that. You can't use the R word for surprise sex. Yeah. Not that you should ever call it surprise sex either. But you know what? That, that's, that's what we're having to sort of face now. It's almost self-censorship. But why does this self-censorship not apply to all the other outlets like BBC, CNN, Fox TV, all of those news channels, they can use those words that we've all been banned from saying. You know, we're, we're reduced to these sort of like gibbering muppets that have to replace out words for fear of upsetting someone, yet news medias can say whatever they fudge they want. Ah, uh, it, it just, um, it just feels a little off, people. It just feels a little off. I, I, I just think it's it, it's it's gone a little bit haywire. The world's gone a little bit, you know, like that movie, that Orwellian movie, nineteen whatever it was. Can't remember the exact date, but you know what I mean. It's it's just a bit freaking weird. In fact, that's probably a bad word. So it's lucky I can't remember. You know. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I think I've gone off not long on long enough. Um, this should be a cup of tea with Captain Steve episode. I haven't got a cup of tea with me. This is actually quite late in the evening that I'm doing this. This this was going on inside of my head. It was keeping me awake. So I figured, let's just put it out there. Let's see what other people think. Let's see if I'm going slightly crazy or whether this is, this is nothing to worry about. Let me know if you think it's something to worry about or not, people. Okay, people, so I've gone on long enough now. If you could just hit all those buttons, the likes, subscribes, notification bells, all that sort of shenanigans. And if you know other people that are having this same sort of quandary, send them this video. If you see people a little bit dishevelled with the old YouTubes, let them know about this video. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. <laughs>